In today's video, we'll have a use case from a production made at my local church during the lockdown here in Denmark. And as we're not allowed to meet on Sundays in churches, and I guess that's everywhere in the world, churches are upgrading their online game quite a lot these days. And we thought it might be helpful to share some of our experiences. In our case, we use the PDC Extreme, one of the top of the line Skahoy controllers, and it's used to control all the nice gear on the table here in, in front of me. And just a word of warning, this is going to be kind of geeky, almost to the point of training you in how to use the Skahoy controller to create really user-friendly cases. And that's okay, right? Because we are geeks, so the volunteers in church doesn't have to be. Let's get into it. This production showcases what is true for many small churches everywhere, that churches use the bits and pieces currently available and do the best they can with it. Sometimes you buy stuff, sometimes you borrow stuff, and sometimes you have old equipment lying around, and sometimes you have random cameras gifted to you by generous individuals. So a common requirement for any organization that works with volunteers is to make it possible for one guy to operate all the equipment. And this is especially true when working with corona restrictions, right? In our case, we are controlling an Emotimo Spectrum ST4 slider with the Sony A7 III mounted on top of it. We also have a PTC Optics camera and an ATA Mini Pro and a computer using Keybridge. So keep in mind that even though we are using PDC Extreme, most of what uh, we will show you today also applies to our other controllers, like for instance, the small PDC OS. Let's look at the flow chart. The PDC Extreme has control over the Emotimo, the computer, the PDC Optics, and the ATEM Mini Pro. And these are connected with Ethernet cables. To get Ethernet connection to the Emotimo, you have to use the I.O. converter box. The feeds from the camera goes into the ATEM via HDMI, and from there we stream directly to Facebook. We also connected an SSD drive to the ATEM to record the stream. And the sound, the sound came from the church-owned sound system, and it was fed into the ATEM's microphone inputs, and from there it was delayed to sync it up with the video. We have put three graphics into the media player of the ATEM switcher to use uh, during the service. And two of the graphics will be used to open and close the stream. And this is very good practice to start your stream 10 to 15 minutes before the service starts. And that will help people to find it online, right? The PC is running Easy Worship. And it has been set up with a countdown alert. The link uh, to how to do this is found in the description of this video, so you can go there to check it out. And we have three slides with the reading of the day. That means a Bible verse that's supposed to be shown on the screen. And all the slides, they have a blue background, so we can key it onto the video. If we take a look at the configuration of the PTC Extreme, the first thing to note is that we have started from scratch and made a custom configuration. And first, let's have an overview of the configuration. So the lower row works as an ME row. Here you can select sources for preview and program on the ATEM switcher. You can also control the key on the ATEM switcher. And at the end of the row, there are three keys connected to Easy Worship. There's quite some complex buttons that we'll get back to in a minute. On the row above, we have mapped out the presets for both the Emotimo and the PTC Optics. And this is very different from our usual approach where each camera usually gets its own row and you are paced between those rows with buttons. But we only needed six presets for each camera and having direct access now that we have enough buttons is really wonderful. So that's what we decided to do. Notice that we painted the PTC Optics preset with a different color, a mint green color to make them stand out out from the buttons for the Emotimo slider. As we only had two moving cameras, we mapped out control of both on different hardware components. On the left side of the controller, the 
zoom rocker has turned into the slide control for the Emotimo slider. And what we usually refer to as the iris and the focus dials has been mapped to pan and tilt for the Emotimo. And this works really well and has freed up the joystick over here to always control the PTC Optics camera. So now we have direct access to both cameras at the same time. On the row below the encoders, we have mapped out various functions. We have white balance for PTC Optics, we have speed limit for both Emotimo and PTC Optics, and here we use the Force Hardware Components feature to turn these buttons into encoders. Then we have start and stop buttons for streaming and recording as well. On the top row of encoders, we have exposure settings for PTC Optics, along with a very nice preset setting for the Emotimo slider. Here you can work with what is called time to target in the Emotimo system, and that lets you set a recall time. Now, when we press the button, it will move from its current position to the recall preset in a specified time. You can have individual times for each preset. And that's a really cool feature that enables you to make some wonderful smooth moves. Now I want to turn your attention to a few keys that does quite complex things like the start button in the bottom row. This button makes all the necessary adjustments to the sources and keys to set up a nice intro slide with a countdown coming from Easy Worship. Looking at the button in Unisketch, we can see that first we have a local label that helps us to understand what this button does. It's on the top of the stack, so it overrides all labels coming from subsequent actions below. Then we choose a source for the key of fill. And remember that the ATEM Mini only has a single key, and later we want to use it for something else. Then we choose the key type. We turn it on. We adjust the position and the scale of it, and finally, we select Media Player 1 for program, and then put Graphic 1 into the Media Player. This may not be the optimal sequence for performing these actions, but as this is a ready for stream button, and only used before the stream starts, it really doesn't matter. To the volunteer, we can now say, before you start streaming, press this button, and the setup would work even if somebody had fiddled with the parameters on Saturday night. I want to point out that these instructions are not something being remembered inside the ATEM switcher. These parameters are actually stored in the controller, and if you replace the ATEM Mini Pro with, say, an ATEM Mini Pro ISO, then the exact same thing would happen when you press this magic button. The next button on the lower row removes the Kia and put Camera 1 on program. So this would be your countdown finished and ready to start button. So here you could tell your volunteer, when the countdown is finished, you press this button, and again, everything would just work. Let's look at the configuration for this button. First, it turns the key off. Then it selects camera one for program. Then we reset all the displays and colors with an output transformation action, and we do so because we don't want to see the state of the Kia on this button, as we already have another button telling us that the Kia is on or off. Then we have uh, made a local label. In this case, the local label has to be later in the stack, as the output transformation would otherwise cancel it out if we had put the label on top of the stack, like we did in the previous buttons we have looked at. So, remember, if your configuration is not behaving as expected, then consider the order of the actions. That's a little tip. After these two buttons, we have three more conventional buttons that puts sources one to three on preview. So these are the buttons that you would use for normal switching operations, together with the cut and auto buttons. Next to those, we have another special button that's set up with the purpose of keying text from Easy Worship onto the picture. And this was used as the preacher was reading the Bible at the start of the sermon. Let's look at the configuration for that button. First, a custom label. Then we change the type of the key to chroma. Then we put input 4 into the key fill. Then we change the position of the key. And remember that the key moved up for the intro countdown, so we have to undo that. And then we wait for 2 tenths of a second. And the reason for doing this is that we don't want to see the move and change of the Kia as we, with the last action, 
auto the key on. I want to mention here that the 18 Mini Pro does not allow you to auto a key on from their control surface, but you can actually do that with Skahoy panels because we have made some triggery with this action. So what we do is this. We first send a command to put the key on preview together with the current program source underneath, and then we auto that on effectively dissolving the key on as the background is the same. And lastly, we put whatever was on preview before this operation began back on preview again. Now the volunteer who is controlling this live stream can just be told, when the pastor reads the Bible, you press the button to overlay the text and it will always work. The passage that the pastor will read is so long that it does not fit nicely onto a single slide. So the operator also has to change the slide and he can do that with the buttons at the end of the row that says next and previous. The control of Easy Worship is handled by Keybridge, our macro and keypress application. And that works for both Mac, PC and Linux computers. And on the controller we have raw panel installed and that is pointed to the IP of the computer where Keybridge and Easy Worship is installed. In Keybridge, now it is just a simple matter of assigning a button to send a down arrow to forward the slide. To make sure that we would always be triggering Easy Worship, we will also use the app focus feature. This allows you to specify an application to bring into focus for the key press. Now your following key press always will be targeted to Easy Worship. And this makes the whole setup much more stable and reliable. Going back to the lower row on the controller, there's one more button that I would like to show you. We have made a button for an offering overlay that this solves on and off nicely. And that is a simple operation, but there's actually more to it because we had to deal with the limitation of the ATEM Mini Pro. When we look at the behavior of this button, you see the reason why we were changing the source of the key on the other buttons. Here we first set the media player to graphic number three. Then we set the fill layer of the key to media player one. Then we wait for the operation to complete and then we auto the key on. And we could have done more of this with more buttons. And in that way, we have made a number of different graphics available, making it very easy for the operator to display other information as well. This setup really enables the operator to focus on what's happening with the service. And he doesn't need to know that he just did a bunch of operations with several different hardware devices involved. And this really is Skahoy making life simple for the end user. So this was a look into a real life configuration that was used in the field of houses of worship production. I hope this video gives you some inspiration on what you can do with the Skahoy controller. And if you have any questions to this setup, or if you would like to see more of these kind of use cases, please let us know in the comments of this video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.